Hey guys, Sa Simon here, and thanks for stopping in and checking out today's video. Today I'm talking about Marvel's Spider-Man for PS4 and 10 Spider-Man suits for them to hopefully add into the game to offer us the widest option of choices they can while playing as the Web Slinger. I'm sure most of you have seen or heard of these suits at one point or another, but if not, I will give you a mild backstory on each one and some of the powers or abilities these suits offered Peter. If you enjoy the video, do the button thing, subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know what you think. We have a while until this game comes out in September, so why not BS about it until then? Thanks again for watching, and here we go. Spider-Man's first costume change, and probably one of the most iconic of his suits, the black suit came to be during the Secret War storyline in 1984. This story saw a character called the Beyonder pick a handful of good guys and bad guys to fight on his planet to see who would win. Spider-Man was picked, and during the battle damages his suit pretty bad. Needing a new one, he finds what he thought was a machine to fix his old suit, but it produces a black sphere which wraps up Peter and forms his new suit. It boosts his powers and was later revealed to be a symbiotic life form feeding off Peter trying to bond with him. After Peter learns of this, he decides to get rid of the suit, but it won't allow him to and becomes tighter on his body when he attempts to remove it. Getting help from the Fantastic Four, Peter learns it hates sonic noises and has Mr. Fantastic blast him with a sonic gun to remove the suit and then they capture it. The symbiote escapes, however, and makes its way back to Peter's apartment, hiding in his closet as a regular suit in an attempt to try and bond with Peter again. Once it does, Peter is able to lure it to a church and uses a ringing bell to separate the suit from himself, thinking he killed it, but we all know better as the suit would find Eddie Brock and later bond with him to become Venom. A little backstory on the suit just cuz. The idea was actually created by Randy Schuler, a Marvel fan and it was purchased by Marvel editor-in-chief at the time Jim Shooter for $220. The original idea was for the suit to have been made by Mr. Fantastic and the Wasp and be similar to the Fantastic Four suits, being made of unstable molecules, allowing Spider-Man to be stealthier and not have to keep sewing his costume back together again and again and again and again. However, before the suit came to be, fans got all pissed off about it and didn't want to see Spider-Man's red suit change. But the writers sort of tied their hands together at that point and needed to come up with a way for Peter to get rid of the black suit, which is when he finds out it's a living thing and gets help from the Fantastic Four. The problem with this was that fans started to like the black suit and didn't want it gone, so the writers then came up with the idea that the black cat made him a cloth version of the black suit so he could keep wearing it. However, when Venom first showed up, he scared the shit out of MJ and Peter had to stop wearing the black suit at that point because it frightened the hell out of her. Still, with news Black Cat could be in the DLC, this is a cool string they could pull for the game. Having this suit in the game offers us some cool things. They could allow the symbiote to somehow block extra incoming attacks on Spider-Man by itself without having to hit a button. Since it is a living thing, it should also be able to defend itself and I think it could be useful skill in the game. So you don't, you know, lose out on certain combos. Not sure if web fluid would be an issue, but with this suit, it shouldn't be. Aside from this, the suit could also change in a moment's notice from Spider-Man's suit to regular clothes with but a thought or a push of a button. This suit is one that is worn by Ben Riley during the start of his crime fighting career. Ben Riley is one of the clones of Peter during the whole terrible clone conspiracy thing. When he realized he wasn't going to be able to escape wanting to be a superhero and do some good with his powers, he created his spider suit from an all red bodysuit and a hoodie he stole from a nearby store. The hoodie was all blue with an image of a large spider tilted on its side. Ben cuts the sleeves off and wears it over his bodysuit. He also has his own utility belt and web shooters. During this time though, Ben develops a newer version of Peter's web shooters. Basically, he changes a ring mechanism in it that allows him to adjust to different types of webbing when firing the shooter depending on how he holds a trigger. He ends up making impact webbing, bullet-like webs that hit targets and can knock them out or encase them in webs. He also develops stingers, which are diamond-shaped darts he shoots that can incapacitate his opponents. Lastly, he redeveloped Peter's tracers to be smaller and able to shoot out of his web shooters. Overall, a big improvement on the character gadgets. I really liked how this suit looked, but I think a lot of fans disliked it because of the hoodie. While wearing this suit, I would like to see maybe a certain type of web shooter ability or maybe an amplification of web shooting abilities with this suit. Since the majority of the suits change Spider-Man's appearance, not all of them will have as many new functions or abilities as the others. This is the suit Ben made after they discovered he was the real Spider-Man and not Peter, but we all know how that turned out. Anyway, this suit was one that was made from scratch by Ben for his time as the one and only Spider-Man. This suit saw the original colors come back to the costume, but with a bit of a different style. This time, the spider emblem covered most of the chest and to the arms and around to the back. Also, his web shooters were now made visible on his wrists instead of being under his gloves. Along with this, the pattern along the boots and pants were changed slightly, taking on more blue in the suit and only showing the web design on the outer sides of the suit where it was red. The suit was to help distinguish between the two Spider-Men, giving Ben Riley his own version of a sort of permanent Spider-Man suit. When the Spider-Man came about with a new suit, many heroes thought that there was a new Spider-Man in town also, because of the way the Spider-Man acted. Ben even went as far as to not tell certain teammates his identity, causing him to be removed from the new Warriors team. But it all worked out for the best. This new suit was mostly for aesthetic purposes, but still, maybe a speed or health boost could come with it while fighting bad guys or some type of combo buildup. 
This suit made its debut only once in Web of Spider-Man issue 100, as it was quickly destroyed by acid while being used. This suit was made as a way for Spider-Man to deal with the new Enforcers, a gang of criminals using high-caliber firearms during their crimes. While attending Empire State University, Peter develops a new metallic compound which he uses to make his new metallic suit. The suit allowed Spider-Man to be bulletproof while sacrificing his speed and agility in the process. It offered no other advantages other than the extra armor and never made any other appearances as it was destroyed while fighting the new Enforcers. It was received well visually as it made a few rounds in toy form, animated shows, and other entries into the Marvel overall universes. There were a few more versions after this one, but this suit I think was burned into a lot of people's minds when it first came out, just because of how visually striking it was. Tossing it into the game would be fun because it looks like there would be a lot of gunfire in this one. The extra armor would help to prevent us from getting gunned down by the gangs in the city. Add to this that the suit suit should also be very heavy and cause Spider-Man to move slower, but perhaps adding some extra power to some of his attacks because you know he is walking around in a metal suit. Shiny. This suit was the one worn by Otto Octavius after he switched bodies with Peter and attempted to prove he was a better hero than him, or a more superior hero. He redesigned Peter's suit to better showcase his idea of what Spider-Man should be. He changed the blue in the suit to black and the design of the spider emblem to be more similar to Ben Reilly's, along with the boots, gloves, and mask so he could appear more fearsome to his enemies. This suit had several upgrades done to help Otto fight crime. First, he created several thousand of spider bots to patrol the city and to help report crimes. Then he layered the mask to prevent mind swapping and enhanced the lenses in the mask to better visualize his environment. He added talons to the hands and feet to fight with, along with being able to shoot out and inject tracers from them. A new remote button located on his chest activated some new gadgets. Four mechanical spider arms would spring from his back to help him fight crime and do things like, you know, his octopus tentacles kind of did. This suit was left for Peter when he got his body back, but he decided to return to his original suit instead of using autos. This run on the Spider-Man books was amazing story-wise if you never read any of it. It turned the concept of Spider-Man upside down and was very entertaining to read and see the difference in Otto and Peter with Otto trying to be a hero and sometimes dealing with his old partners whom you would have to stop, such as members of the Sinister Six, like the Vulture. This would be a great addition to the game, adding in the four tentacle arms to better help fight enemies or just use them as stabilizing arms while web swinging. I like the design of the suit because it looks so much more intimidating than the other ones and it's just, just really cool to look at. This suit came to be when Spider-Man was joined with the Uni power during the Acts of Vengeance storyline because of a lab accident at Empire State University. It changed his costume into Captain Universe or Cosmic Spider-Man, an all-white appearance from the feet up to the chest where the suit took on a starry, space-like quality as if you were looking out into the galaxy. Along the starry pattern on the chest and arms were also circular white orb patterns. This starry space look for the chest also appeared on the mask, but a small portion over the mouth had the classic red color of Spider-Man's suit and web pattern from his mask. This accident also gave him a huge power boost. These powers included flight, limited telekinesis, Univision, being able to see in microscopic, x-ray, and telescopic vision, enhanced senses, and a psychic awareness of imminent danger. Captain Universe usually possesses the ability of molecular rearrangement of organic and inorganic matter, transmutation of elements, the ability to fire bursts of energy and concussive forces from his hands, and hypnosis. Spider-Man's skin after gaining the Uni power was designed to be virtually indestructible. In fact, his entire body was made highly resistant to injury and he was invulnerable to almost all types of physical harm. Spider-Man can easily withstand the crushing pressure of a black hole in this form. He is not bothered by the friction associated with atmospheric re-entry and can withstand plunges into stars and even supernovas unharmed. By exceeding 99% of the speed of light, Spider-Man can shift himself into hyperspace, a dimension in which velocity is not limited by the speed of light. I don't know what any of that shit means, but he's pretty much just godlike in this form. It was during this time when Spider-Man took on such foes as Magneto and the Hulk and pretty much kicked their ass due to this huge power increase. I mean, in this form, he literally punched the the Hulk in gray form into space, to the point where the Hulk wasn't even sure if he can get back down to Earth, so Spider-Man had to fly up and save him, but yeah. This was all short-lived as the power soon left Spider-Man when he defeated the Tri-Sentinel and he had to return to his regular old garb. However, the suit made a lasting impression and it is one that has been in several other games. Allow us, once we have this suit, to be able to shoot out power beams and maybe even fly or use telekinesis for a limited time. I know it would cheapen the idea of web-slinging, but come on, if Spider-Man can fly in the suit, why not let them? And if so, why not let us just play around with these powers even in a free roam capacity? This suit is one worn by Peter after he was separated from the symbiote by Mr. Fantastic at the Baxter building. Having no other clothes on him, he was loaned a spare Fantastic Four suit to wear home, 
paper bag for a mask, and a kick me sign on his back with no shoes to wear. This outfit came courtesy of the Human Torch whom Spider-Man shares a close friendship with, which is why the suit also came with a kick me sign on the back for laughs. The bag on Peter's head is the icing on the cake here because the Fantastic Four have no use for masks. I don't see how this thing wouldn't just keep coming off or tear from the speed of him running and jumping through the city. I'm sure he could web it to his head some, but if anyone has ever carried groceries in one of these bags and it had a slightly tear or rip in it, it can cause you to have a lot of problems if you're not by a countertop. Anyway, this suit is always one that shows off, I think, because of how silly it is. I would almost say give this suit a negative effect just because of its absurdity. Maybe make it so that when you fight people as Bagman, you have a chance to slip and fall on a banana peel. This suit belongs to a future Spider-Man, a geneticist named Miguel O'Hara who gained his spider-like powers from a gene splicing incident when the company he was about to quit injected him with some dangerous drug called Rapture. He tried to rid himself of the drug by using the gene slicer he helped to invent, but unbeknownst to him, a jealous co-worker had set it to repeat the previous experiment of a spider. The last time they had tried this experiment, it killed the test subject, which was why Miguel O'Hara had quit his job. But this time it worked. Instead of becoming a company-owned version of Spider-Man, he became the opposite to fight large corporations ruling the world in 2099. This suit was drastically different at the time for what Spider-Man looked like, mostly to help differentiate the difference between Peter and Miguel and the timeline. This suit was a dark blue and had a red spider skull-like pattern on the chest and a striped pattern that extended down the arms, possibly stealing from Batman. The suit also had two arm guards protruding from each forearm. Power-wise, the Spider-Man didn't have a spider sense but did get the regular power upgrade of stamina, speed, reflexes, strength, and so on. Finnerets in his forearms allow him to shoot webs. He had a minor ability to heal but it was nothing compared to the regular Spider-Mans. Another huge difference in the two, Miguel possessed enhanced hearing and vision, able to zoom in and out with his eyes, while also being able to see objects in motion which others would only perceive as a blur. Miguel can only cling to surfaces with his hands and feet due to the angled talons protruding from his fingers and toes. These talons are not retractable but can fold down when Miguel concentrates. They are also able to rend metal. Miguel possesses venom glands and pronounced pointed canine teeth. When he bites a foe, he can release a toxin that can temporarily stun his enemies. I was not a huge fan of this comic growing up mostly because I was a kid and I didn't know what was going on in this new 2099 world and because of that never got into it. Until Shattered Dimensions that is. Which turned me around on the idea of the 2099 Spider-Man. It was fun playing in the dark blue suit and having the webbing or cape like thing that comes out of his suit to help him glide around on the maps. I would like to see this ability come into the new Spider-Man game with this suit, allowing us to glide and web sling around at the same time. The look of this suit is what helps give it a different feel and adding different abilities like being able to bite people would be pretty cool. This suit is a more recent addition to the closet. The original Iron Spider suit was made for Peter by Tony Stark during the Civil War storyline that saw the heroes choose sides about whether or not to register their identities with the government. It was a suit mainly used by Spider-Man during the Civil War while he was Team Iron Man. The story was big news at the time because it was in this story that Peter decides to unmask himself on live television for all the world to see. He did this as a way to show his support for the Superhuman Registration Act and because his secret identity was a well-guarded secret. Of course, this was all undone later on in the brand new Days storyline, but at the time when this happened, it was huge. This suit was basically an Iron Man suit for Spider-Man with a bunch of additions for overall function and use. The main things that were added with this suit are three mechanical arms to fight with which could also be used as cameras to see around corners and use as grippers for grabbing items. The suit could also change into his regular red and blue suit. He later abandons the suit after he changes sides and finds out that Tony was using the suit to track him and learn more about his abilities. It never really made a return after that, but the superior Spider-Man suit did sort of steal the tentacle idea from it. Possibly, because you know Otto has tentacles too. Having the suit in the game would be a blast. Let us be able to fight with the extra arms somehow or use them when swinging around the suit. City. Maybe even have them do random attacks when able to go against bad guys or block gunfire. Another fun idea would be to let us apply skins over this suit. By that I mean allow us to use the abilities of this suit but be able to change its appearance like in the comics so we can use the powers of the Iron Man suit but have the classic red and blue suit on. This outfit falls outside of Spider-Man technically, but then again Kane is a disfigured clone of Peter Parker, so yeah, it falls in the right spot for me on this list. And besides all that nonsense, Kane's original look, at least to me, was badass. Kane was the Jackal's first possible success at cloning Peter Parker, only because he didn't immediately turn into a pile of goo. 
However, slowly over time, this degeneration process did begin for Kane, and that forced him to flee from the Jackal due to the latter's need to destroy Kane because he viewed him as a failure. Naming himself, Kane adopted a costume that slowed down his degeneration, but at the same time, the suit also reproduced the scarring that ran all over Kane's body. Unable to live a normal life because of his disfigured features, Kane's anger grew. Most of all, he hated the Scarlet Spider, Ben Riley, whom he, like the Jackal, believed to be the original Spider-Man, and thus the reason for his tormented existence. Believing Peter to to be the successful clone, Kane took it upon himself to ensure that Peter led the charmed life while Ben only had sorrow and grief. This went on and off for years with Kane causing Ben problem after problem trying to frame him for murder among other things yet stepping in to clear Ben's name when his actions caused problems in Peter's life. Because you know, they all look alike and having the same genetics, blah blah blah. Kane has lived and died and lived and died again and came back a few other times as well. His suit is vastly different from the other Spider-Man suits. First, his suit is all black or a very dark blue. There is also some sort of netting or web-like design over the arms, legs, and face. Like the 2099 suit, this outfit has a sort of cape to it. The mask for Kane allows his Fabio-like hair to be displayed for all the jealous women in New York to see. Kane's powers are a bit different than Peter's as well. After leaving Professor Warren, Kane realized that the partial degeneration that was destroying his body had also caused a slight amplification of the powers he had genetically inherited from Peter. His strength, speed, stamina, and agility were on par with those of Peter, but he also gained a precognitive power as well, which shows him flashes of the future. This new ability has been assumed to be an amplified version of Peter's spider sense. He also possesses the mark of Kane, a coercive touch that he used to leave an eaten away handprint on his victims' faces, partially burning away the skin. Lastly, Kane is also immune to Spider-Man's spider sense since it recognizes is Kane as Peter because he is a clone. This suit would rock in my opinion. I just like it because it feels so very intimidating because, well, Kane was a badass that didn't mind killing bad guys. He even did so much of it, he was a well-known hitman in New York for a time. Adding this suit to the game gives us that wide variety of choices to play with and add in some type of grab power attack and let us loose on the city. Well guys, that is all I have for you on this one. I hope you found this video mildly interesting at least, and informative. I'm very excited about the Spider-Man game that's going to drop in September, and look forward to making more content like this and others in the future. If you guys enjoyed the video, do the button stuff, and leave a comment letting me know what you think. I hope to hear from you guys more in the future. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.